Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide divorce mediation and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we'll discuss valuations for financial reporting with Mark Zyla. Mark is a valuation expert in Georgia, the managing director of Zyla Valuation Advisors, which is an Atlanta valuation and litigation consulting firm. Mark is also the chairman of the Standards Review Board for the International Valuation Standards Council. He also was the primary author of the education program of the AICPA and the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors for the Certified in Entity and Intangible Asset Credential. This is the CEIV, which I believe most valuation professionals are aware of, that goes towards certifying uh, valuation experts in valuation for financial reporting purposes. And it's a fairly new credential. Well, and you mentioned a couple different times, <clears throat> this concept of mandatory performance framework. So is this like a guideline of I need to spend 10 hours researching and two hours talking to people? Or is it more loose? And in just like kind of a roadmap of how I should things to consider and, and such. Yeah. So, so if you think about professional standards, there's professional standards related to ethics, just competent ethical behavior that that you know we all follow. Right. There are technical standards. So if you have a credential from NACFA or the AICPA or or RICS, you have to follow their own technical standards. Um, or IBSC is another example of a, of a set of technical standards, uh, or IBS under IBSC. And then there's, per, there's performance frameworks. And performance frameworks are not how to do something which mm. falls under the technical standards. It's how much to do. Mm. So the idea behind the mandatory performance framework is to assist in the audit process because it provides a framework for valuation specialists how much work do you have to do for it to be considered auditable so that the process is smoother, that the audit, that management, first of all, is comfortable and they, they management takes responsibility for the work. But then it's it's clear enough to the auditors that the, they can follow the assumptions, the methodology and, and make it a, a conclusion as, as whether or not that that's reasonable for for audit evidence. Well, and and you and we've talked a lot about the audit too. So typically when you're pulled in, you're going to be an outside valuation firm outside of the auditor, right? That's correct, yeah. And and when you come in, but talk to me a little bit because we've talked about how much is involved in the actual valuation, but there could be, you know, of the whole project, um sometimes that could be like 50% of the work. The other 50% could be talking to the auditors, working through the process. Do you see it kind of fall in like 50-50 or do you see 75-25? But, you know, like talk to us a little bit about how you have to prove up that audit or that um, valuation to the auditors. Yeah, so so the process is typically um, the outside specialist does their work, um, provides draft, analysis to management work talks through it with management so that management gets comfortable and management um, is able to take responsibility for the assumptions and methodology they're not the valuation specialists but they have to have enough basic understanding to that they're comfortable with it and able to take response responsibility for it when it comes time for the audit um, when the auditors look at the balance sheet say you know okay where these numbers come from they say here here's my uh, retained an outside expert, here are their qualifications, here's their report. So the report goes to the audit team, the auditor looks at it, you know, generally, you know, they have some experience with outside value, working with management's outside valuation specialists, but they bring in their uh, uh, valuation specialists on their own audit team who mm -hmm. goes through and typically they have a series of checklists where they go through um, and compare the work to their checklist and they may develop questions if there's something that's not clear from the outside experts report or, or schedules. And so they, they give those questions back to management for additional clarification. Some of the questions management can answer. Some of the questions go back to the outside experts. Sometimes you have conference calls and you walk through the issues 
and you get the auditor comfortable. Or sometimes the auditor will say, look, we don't approach it that way, um, but we did a shadow calculation. We did it the way we normally do it, and it comes up the same, so we're okay with it. We don't necessarily agree with, with that assumption or, or whatever. So it's a process of give and take. And so sometimes it takes two or three rounds of those questions to get the auditors comfortable. So it can be time consuming at the, at the end of the engagement. It's typically not 50%, but it's not 5%, it's, it's a little bit, you know, somewhere in between, depending yeah. on the experience of the auditor and the and management and so on. Sure, but it is, it is defending your valuation to some internal auditors um, that may have some questions and things like that. You briefly mentioned that the business owner would have to take um, ownership in some of the process. Um, I think that what you were alluding to was the fact that we work with them for projections. We work with them for looking at the future a little bit. And so a lot of times we as valuation people kind of provide a framework for some of that, but then we need the input from the owners to really solidify the assumptions, right? Yeah, it, it, well, it's that. I mean, that's that's a very important part of the process because the you know information that they provide is is critical to um, a you know robust you know credible evaluation. Mm -hmm. But it's also for financial reporting purposes. It's also um, important for management, the business owner, to understand that since it's going on their financial statements and the financial statements are their representation of the mm. forms of company that they have to take responsibility, even though they haven't hired an outside expert. So it's helpful for both the outside valuation expert and management to have constant communication and make sure management's comfortable with the assumptions, you know, understands the methodology, um, ask critical questions, you know, perhaps, you know, do some sensitivities to see, um, you know, if they're comfortable with with the process, the assumptions, and the conclusions. 